So in the forthcoming independence referendum, I believe that she who controls all Scotland's public funds will control the debate, and ICAR provides the control. <coughs> uh, and uh, this is my book, which is available for sale in the foyer, uh, if you're interested in uh, taking it further. But in the meantime, that's the wee pricey, and I'm delighted to take any questions uh, or comments that you might have. Thank you. guarantees the Scottish Government money every month. So people have the confidence to know that their benefits and their pensions and all the rest of it will be paid. Uh, and uh, it also means that although there will be a lot of arguing with HMRC, HMRC, I've got nothing to do with this, we don't need to involve HMRC in this at all. So that can really be a legacy issue that can be dealt with about people's past liabilities for tax and all the rest of it. And I think that's, that's it. You know, we, we, we play according basically to rules that have been established in, in, in the UK for years. We have a very, very complex taxation system. Uh, even since it's Scotland, but some tax, taxes is still actually very, very complicated. It's just put another layer on it. Uh, so you have, say, 17,000 pages of the, the UK tax law. You know, the HMRC was employing 65,000 people. I think we're trying to reduce a wee bit, but that's a huge number of people. And of course, you've got so many stakeholders involved in that. You've got the, the people that are public servants, eh, but you've also got the, 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 the private sector as well. You've got accountants, lawyers, etc., financial advisors, and they're all they're all you know enjoying that wee honey pot. And that's what they, the, and that's how they justify it. This is taking it away from that because you won't need. I mean, people won't need accountants. Accountants will need to do other things. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's so you won't even need to, you don't even need a surveyor. Because unlike some other systems of annual ground in, I don't need system valuations of property because I have seen valuations over my 40 years of experience in the rest of the days there to tell you. Uh, so we don't, it's just purely on the space that you actually own and occupy. I understand that there's the different registries of land, the registry of Cezine and the normal registry, and that the registry of Cezine is they're described, you know, and you can't even get access to it, or and you, maybe you can pay to look at the actual registry. And, and uh, if you could talk a little bit about that, and, and, and are there other types besides Cezine and besides yeah. the public record? Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, there are there are two there are two registers of land. Um, Scotland has the oldest 
um, compulsory public public register of interest in land in the world. 1617, the Jeffrey's Seasons was founded. And so when we were too poor and too ignorant and all the rest of it, we created the first compulsory public national public register of land in the world. Uh, and it's still going strong. Uh, but um, it was basically a, a deed space system. So basically, uh, in days before there were you know, uh, plans, uh, you would have things like, for example, the uh, Duke of Burgoyle's land were all in the lands of Burgoyle. That's all I would say. <laughs> Over the years, as bits have been sold off and all the rest of it, there have been uh, greater descriptions. And then from basically the late Victorian times onwards, they have used plans. And in most cases, they've been already serving plans. But uh, in the 1970s, it was decided that we really should have a map-based system, a proper map-based system, uh, the, the land register, and it was introduced. Uh, and it's been, it was introduced in 1981, and I was working in Paisley then, and registered as the first county that used uh, to do it. And they said at that time it would take 10 years to complete. Um, we're just about uh, two thirds of the way there now, I think. <laughs> Uh, for various reasons. But anyway, that's, so, so we have these two systems. Um, excuse me. How my system works is we're not dependent on completing the land register in order to bring this in. Because basically the, the feature of the, the land register is they have this thing called the cadastral plan, which is a massive plan, the electronic plan of Scotland. And basically, once properties are registered for the land register on it, it basically fills that one bit in. And that's basically how it works. Yes, look at that. Yeah. But under my system, the obligation to register for land uh, to, to, for, for anchor is, is rests on the owner of the property, and not, not not something which is the duty of government actually to go out and say to people, you know, you own it, you you owe us this. So it doesn't matter where the owner is. I mean, they can be in the Grand Cayman and all the rest of it. They've got to register for it. And they go online to register it, and they go online to pay it. So, under my proposal, if they fail to, if they fail to pay it over, I'd say, three years, or maybe short, or maybe longer, uh, with the accrued interest on it, then government will have the power to repossess it. You know, and that is, that, that's the way. So it doesn't matter who owns it. It's, it's the fact that the obligation is on the, uh, is on the owner to register. It would be a register of, of Agfer, basically, which would have used the cadastral plan, which would fill in the bits that, uh, you know, that uh, whenever they had when people had registered, it would show up that they had registered. And that's basically how it works. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, in a diminution of the money that comes from the so-called block grant mm -hmm. from Westminster. Mm -hmm. So is that possibly one of the reasons why it hasn't happened? Because the money which was raised would then be taken away from Westminster. The second part of the question was, would there be, um, would the, the Crown, private and the public land owned by the Crown, would that also be taken in within the system? Um, or does the Queen manage to get an exemption as she has in so many other ways? Well, first of all, to answer your, your second question first, um, the, um, under, under the Scotland Act, uh, the, Scottish, the Scottish Parliament cannot levy tax on um, land and property owned by the UK government. Uh, and um, so that, you know, that, that, would be, that would be an issue, albeit it's one that could be overcome. Because for example, if we look at Queen Elizabeth House, that's this great sort of what I call the Dublin Castle of Edinburgh, uh, and they, um, that, is, that isn't actually owned by the, Scot uh, by the UK government, it's, it's privately owned, but they lease it to them. So under, under my system, the liability to pay it is basically falls on the owner, albeit they can generally recover the cost of the, the, the advert from their tenant. So that would be a wee conversation that you pick up with you can have with the landlord. Similarly, if you look at Fast Lane, which is close to where I live, yeah. um, and that, I think, is owned by the UK government, but uh, they basically 
and that is managed under license by Babcock International. So we could quite probably put into our legislation a clause that in cases where there are licensees of ground, that if the UK government isn't amenable to pay it, then the licensee would be responsible. So we can get them in different ways. But I mean, in the scheme of things, in the scheme of things it's, 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 it's a modest part of the total that the UK government owns. Um, I was actually going on to the, the land register to check the, 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 who actually owns Bomorgan Estate, for example, today, and I didn't quite manage it. I'll, I'll check it today, probably tomorrow. Um, and, uh, excuse me, <coughs> and I, I'm quite sure it doesn't say the Queen, you know. Um, but uh, on the basis that, uh, you know, it's a company, a holding company, or a trust, or something like that, which it probably will be, uh, then uh, the liability will go over there and they'll need to pay it. And certainly once we're independent, they'll be paying it. Uh, to make a lose up, lose up for ourselves, a loss up for ourselves. But I mean, just to give you an illustration, that the, the Balmoral, just the, the castle itself, under the proposal I got for independent, I mean, the Queen pays about 3,600 for council tax for the castle. It's, 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 it's bad nature, whatever it is. You know, um, under my proposal, we should be paying a hundred thousand pounds a year, and that's just the castle. All the other buildings in the land itself. Are going to pay. <laughs> Another illustration. I showed you, you know, um, that Scotland's largest landowner would be paying about forty-five million on their buy, and that was excluding these buildings because I haven't managed to purchase them all. I was looking at the two estates' um, uh, annual accounts. Now, the Cluey Estates don't just own the land, and they own almost as much land as, as Anders Paulson owns, but in addition to that, we've obviously got fancy palaces and castles that they have, uh, but they also do a lot of business down south as well. So according to their most recent accounts, uh, uh, the tax that they paid uh, for everything that they do was around about 18 million pounds. So, if they have to pay an for of round about £45 million pounds a year, £45 million pounds a year, they will see that it is in their interest to uh, divest themselves quickly of the land and things which they consider to be an economic to, to their So it will, it will the, the thing that AGFR coming in will do is that there will be masses of land in Scotland which will come in the market. And the very fact is that most of them will be able to pick up for nothing as long as you're prepared to pay the anchor on it. Um, and uh, that, that's, that's one of the, the alternative ways of changing you know, our land ownership in Scotland. It's, it's ridiculous, the concentration. Now, the, the Scottish Government is introducing a, a, a new land reform bill and looking at public interest tests for certain sizes of, of, um, of holdings and all the rest of it. And you know, there also you get community buyouts, but part of that community buyout is funded by us, you know, giving money to these communities to actually pay the clues of this world and all the rest of it. And that really is a great with me. I mean, I don't think we should be doing that at all. But all means give them support to develop their estates or whatever once, once they own them uh, and they're in the community, but not actually to, to, to subsidise the purchase of them. And this, this is the exact opposite. This is going to force landlords, this is a big stick. This is going to force landlords either to pay you know, pay the act for if they can afford it, or if not, then, you know, the alternative is they're going to have to sell it, or probably in most cases give it away. Yes. Graham, uh, I think, I mean, in the room, right, I think, you, see, you know, a lot of the talk for your proposals, uh, including yourself, um, and I know you've been pushing this for years, uh, because I used to be in the party already, but, um, uh, my, uh, my, my uh, partner here, well, not she's not a partner, I mean, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 my friend here, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's, uh, <laughs> I, let's ask you a question before, I, 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 I'm sorry, but I'd like to press on it a bit. Um, you, you know, what are the chances of, of, of your proposal being fully accepted, or at least partly accepted, by the, the current government before the referendum? If it's, if it's to be... Uh, this is about in not much more than a year's time. Uh, this could help us win it. 
Uh, you know, so what are the chances of that? Uh, you know, as an it, you've got the inside the track on this. What are the chances of this happening before the referendum? And it's not surely been part as one of those things we can deal with after independence. Well, I mean, my belief is that we have we have a we have a, an issue with a lot of people that probably um, emotionally would vote yes, but you know they're concerned about their pension and all that kind of thing. Uh, and I, I really do feel that you know if you put money in people's pockets before it, then you know that that, that moves the dial considerably. But it's got to be something they actually see because people are looking at what I'm proposing would probably the first and say this is fantastic. Well, this this just can't be made. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so you've actually got to, to to produce the goods and put it in their pocket. And my first name is Thomas, so I'm an outer by nature, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, and that's it. You've got to produce you've got to produce the goods and put the money in their pocket for it. Uh, and I think that would move the dial tremendously. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I, 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 would, be, I would be quite surprised if uh, the current Scottish Government uh, did actually move on it. Uh, but um, I'm in the National Executive of the SNP and every opportunity I have to raise it with, the, with, with, with Nicola and other, other members, I do. Uh, and I really said, look, we're, we're getting an emergency. In an emergency, you've actually got to do something a bit dramatic. And this is an opportunity where you could bring in emergency legislation. You're never, you're never going to get um, consensus on new, a new taxation. Except, I mean, we've got the Labour Party, we've got the Lib Dems, we've got the, the Greens, we've got the SNP, Alpha, um, we've got the, the SSC, uh, the, the, um, the Scottish Socialist Party, SSP as well. I mean, they have all talked about. Um, you know, having a form of annual ground rent or land value taxation. So the only ones are the Tories now, you're never going to get them to agree to it. So forget about the idea of consensus. But this this isn't this isn't based on, on economists making a projection about, you know, if we raise, you know, if we raise back the five percent we'll bring in X. It's not based on that, it's based on things that we already know. We know the size of Scotland. Uh, it's for the Scottish Government to decide what, uh, what budget it wants and what it wants to achieve and if you calculate much that's all going to cost and then it's just a matter basically of dividing that uh, dividing that into the, the, the square metres that we have in Scotland and then adjusting it uh, for the different land types and that's really all that's involved in it. So it's, it, you know, I'm, I'm not, it's, it's not pie in the sky, it's something that we can do and I think one of the, the Benefits of the, the Land Commission, and there's a lot of questions I have about the Land Commission, is that in one of the, uh, the papers they did indicate that over 60% of dilapidated and vacant land in urban Scotland is owned by the public sector. And that's been developed by uh, you know, the big uh, Labour councils in Glasgow in particular over generations that they would you know, take into this land and do nothing with it. And it's, it meant people couldn't get houses. You know, built and then that ground they couldn't have made environments. And you know, every town and village in Scotland is the same. There is something lying dilapidated or whatever. And in, in 60% of the cases, it's probably owned by the local authority or one of the other public sectors. So, this is something, you know, which we could use uh, immediately and say to them look, if you don't do something productive with this really quickly, then you're going to have to dispose of this as well, because there are plenty of other people that will do it. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, that, that's where the bulk of the money is. It's in the dilapidated and vacant land which has been lying about for years doing absolutely nothing. What did Kate have to say to you? What did Kate have to say to you? Your slides were talking about Kate. Oh, 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 okay, okay, for a second part. Um, well, Kate, Kate, being a government minister, was quite circumspect in her response, but she put it this way she didn't kick it out of, out of court, uh, and she is aware of it, uh, and she's still aware of the, the you know, what uh, I'm, trying to, um, I'm trying to persuade them to, to, to consider. Um, but I mean, I mean, she didn't. She didn't need to have a, a debate with me about about this. But she she freely agreed to do it. I tried to it. And um, so I mean, I, I take my hand off to in respect to that. So I don't know whether she will move on. I think they will move on the dial. The problem is that 
Um, there are different forms of land value taxation that have been used in different parts of the world. This is fairly unique. Um, uh, and, um, you know, I just think, you know, well, you know, if we if anything in modern economics, why not invent this one too? Okay, we have, we have to end it here, but you're more than welcome to come and talk to you today individually, but we need, to, we need to stop the panel so that we can get ready for the next one so we don't go any further behind. So please, uh, please.